235 plus a neutron goes to barium-142 plus krypton-92 and two neutrons. So I want to calculate the energy in joules released when I have one gram of this right here. Uh, and it undergoes this above. This is a fission reaction. So a fission reaction, I am breaking apart this big nucleus into smaller nuclei. So uranium goes down to the smaller barium and krypton. Uh, the masses are 235.04, and 1.0087. Here's how you apply Einstein's formula uh, and calculate this energy. There's a couple parts. There's actually more than one way to do this. So I'll give you one way, and then I'll explain the other ways that you could have done it if you felt like it. So uh, remember that we have energy equals mass times mc squared. And I think it's helpful to think of it in these terms. Change in energy is change in mass times c squared. So actually, we want the change in mass, and that will give us the change in energy, which is really what they're asking for. Okay. So, uh, what I encourage you to do, start off with the change in mass. And that's going to be uh, the change in mass. What you're going to do is take the product mass and subtract the reactant mass. So you're going to calculate the mass of the products, subtract that, uh, subtract the mass of the reactants. Okay, let's do these one at a time. So the mass of the products. That's the barium plus the krypton plus two neutrons. So I'm going to add barium, the krypton, and two neutrons together using these numbers I was given. Barium, 141.92. I've got krypton at 91.92. And I've got two neutrons at 1.0087. You want to keep all these sig figs in the beginning and do your rounding at the end. Because uh, there are a lot of sig figs here. So that turned out to be, for the products, 235.86. And this is in units of U, or atomic mass units. Let's do mass of the reactants now. Mass of the reactants. And this will seem kind of scary with all the calculations you do, but it's going to follow the same kind of method each time you do it. The reactants, we have a uranium and a neutron. So the uranium is 235.04, and the neutron is 1.0087. That turns out to be, for the reactants, 236.05. U. Now, delta M, mass of the products minus mass of the reactants, equals uh, 235. Oh, I put an extra decimal point in, so that's not there. Can't have two decimal points. 236.05. OK, 0.86 minus 236.05. Notice we're going to get a negative number. What that means, I have a loss of mass when this reaction occurs. If there's a loss of mass, it must have been converted to energy. So energy is given off, and that's what we expect for a fission reactor. We want to generate energy so you can power your houses and such. And so because that's given off, uh, we're going to have a lot of energy released. Now we want to calculate the energy release. There's a couple <coughs> ways that this can be done. So I'll show you uh, kind of the most standard way, and then there, there are easier ways to do it. Okay. So I want to plug in my numbers, and I want to convert to joules. So uh, this is minus 0.19 U times c squared 2.9979 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's just the speed of light squared. Uh, the problem is, that's not going to be units of joules. So
So uh, just on a kind of scratch paper here, a joule, that's a Newton meter. A Newton is a kilogram times meters per second squared, and we still got our meter. So this is a kilogram meter squared per second squared. So notice how it matches up. We'll get the meter squared per second squared from the speed of light squared. So we got that part of the joule, but the kilogram, I need to convert this U to kilogram units. So it's kilograms meter squared per second squared, not U times meter squared per second squared. So I need to do a little conversion before I get a final answer in joules. So what I'm actually going to do is uh, get a new overhead. Okay, then this time. So there's one conversion I have to do. Multiply that whole thing by one point, and here's one of the conversions I gave you: 6605 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms per u. Okay, so I'm converting that u up there to kilograms. This will give me kilograms, meters squared per second squared. Now I'll have units that are in joules. Okay? Uh, I guess you have the joy of calculating that number at home because I didn't write down the answer. Okay? Well, we're not finished with the problem. This, this is what you want to remember. Whenever you use this formula here, that's going to give you the joules per nucleon or nuclei. Nuclei, nucleon, either way. <coughs> I don't want that. I want one gram. So I really want joules per gram in this question. Okay? Not joules per nucleon. So I have to do some more conversions. 